There's a lot of different ways to add style to a React application, and I'm going to show you all of them. The first one, it's the inline style, exactly if we were in a HTML file. So you can use style, but here it's not going to be a string. It's going to use the syntax of React, so the simple brackets. And inside, we are going to push an object. So in every object, of course, we can't use the iPhone. So here, especially in React, we are going to use the camel case. Let me give you an example. On an HTML file, you would use background color and then you would put red like this. And look at this, when I save, I got an error and I can't use the iPhone. Of course, because I'm an, an object. Instead, what I would do is to remove this iPhone and just put here background color like this, but it doesn't work. What I need to do is to use camel case. So if you don't know camel case, Pascal case, snake case, you need to check online what I'm talking about. Okay, so here the camel case is just capitalize the first letter of every time you get an, a, a space or an iPhone, you need to remove that space and this iPhone and put a capital letter except for the first one. As you can see, background that doesn't get a capital letter. Here, I just have a lowercase letter. And we got background color red. And there we go, we've got our background color red. In this object, I can use every attribute that I would use in CSS. So here I would use, for instance, the display flex. Remember that. Here it works, okay? This is regular CSS that you are writing in here. If I use color and I put blue, and suddenly I got the color blue, if I want to use, for instance, the font size, I would have font size, etc., etc. okay? So here we see that we can use inline style to change the style of my header. Now let's put that on my H1 instead of my uh, header. If I save, suddenly we can see that I can target with the inline style that I just wrote every tag element on uh, my uh, tree of elements, okay? So here I got my um, HTML that understands that I'm targeting the style of the paragraph and the style of the H1. That was the first way to change basically my style in uh, inside my, uh, my file directly in line. The second possibility is to use an external style sheet. Okay, so this external style sheet here, let's come, come back to it. I got this app.css that I imported up here. So what I can do here is just to target and of course I'm under CSS, so this time I don't need to use, um, I don't need to use uh, uh, the capital letters, the camel case, I can write normal style. And here we can see that app.css imported my header that I got here. Then I can do exactly the same, font size 12, display flex, uh, and color blue, if I remember well, there we go. Okay, so we've got suddenly our elements in here. Okay, now let's just duplicate this header. So what I need to do here, we didn't see the fragments yet, but I'm going to show you after. Let's say that I got two headers. What we can see is that the style of app.css has been applied to the two headers. It's normal, it's because in this file, I got the two headers and I imported the CSS file. So if I remove this header and I get this one, and I come back to main.js, and remember on main.js we got app that has been called. If I put my header here, suddenly we see that the style of app.css has been imported. And that's probably a problem because we don't want to have this header here that shares the same style. We are going to see that just after. Okay, so we can see that we got the inline style, we got the external CSS file, okay? And I can just uh, remove that, for instance, and there we go. Let's come back now to our app.gsx, and let's say that we would have, instead of having um, a, a, a static style, we would have a dynamic style. What does it mean? Let's say that we would have a background color here and inside I would have red like this, okay? What I can do is to use my inline style to apply this element there. So here we can see that background color here has the same, um, uh, the same syntax 
as my object is waiting for. If I would have a BG color like this, okay, what I would need is to put BG color like this. And suddenly we can see that dynamically, we can take some content coming from a variable. So here I'm saying content because it's a string. For me, it's some content. Here we've got um, the variable that we apply dynamically, okay, to our inline style. This is totally possible we're gonna see later that we can use a button to um, change this style. But I wanna, what I wanna say now is that probably in some cases you would like to change dynamically the color of an element and this is the way of doing it, okay? So if your variable is named BG color, you would use BG color. Me, I'm just going to use background color because it's shorter and I know that I'm talking about background color. Okay, so now let's say that uh, I would have a button called uh, change color. Okay, so here I'm going to come here, change color. There we go. Let's say that when I click on this button, I would like to change the color. Okay, let's say that here I'm going to use the on click function that we already saw for the count. Remember, when you create a React application, you get this count button, and when you click on it, it's going to change the count. Okay, let's say that I would like to attribute to background color and I'm going to go down here and this is for the demonstration. I would like to ha attribute the color blue. So if I click, it doesn't work. It doesn't work yet because we are not using user state, but it's going to be possible later when we're going to use user state. So user state is actually the topic of another lesson, but I'm going to show you quickly how to do it. So here I, I got set background color. And instead of that, I'm going to have my user state. And instead I'm going to have red and there we go. And instead of this on click, I'm going to use set background color and I'm going to put blue. I'm going to save update. And when I click, we can see that I changed dynamically here the color. All right. So this is another way to apply some style directly, um, actually directly to uh, your um, application and dynamically. Okay, another thing, let's come back. So I'm just going to remove all of that for now. And I'm going to remove also that. Okay, and I'm going to remove that. And I wanna make another demonstration. Okay, so on the header, I'm going to start again. I'm going to put a background color, which will be green. Okay, I got this header here. Now let me come back to my main.gsx that we've got here. And I'm going to add the header, but this time I'm going to remove the style. We can see that the inline style is applied to my app.gsx that I got down there. Now let's remove here the style that I got here. I got two, um, actually two header, hello reactor from app.gsx and I got hello reactor from main.gsx, all right? So we got those two different ones. Remember, we had this index.css. So if I go to this index.css, here we got a lot of elements here and probably somewhere, or we don't have, we are going to put a header and I'm going to, uh, sorry, I'm going to add background, background color red. Of course, here, this background color is going to be applied to every header because here we've got our index. And if I remove that, suddenly we don't even have all the, um, all the code that we got here. Okay, so if I want to target all the, um, all the header, probably it's better for me to go to the index. But remember, on app.gsx, uh, we used to have this app.css. And when I come to my app.css, sorry, I'm going to come back here, there we go and I put my header, it's doing exactly the same thing. And we would like to scope actually the app.css file just to this header and not from the one on main.gsx. Well, the first step would be to transform this CSS file into a module. So under React.js, what you can do is to rename here your CSS file, whatever is the name, and put here instead module. So here I got app.module.css and I'm turning my CSS file into a module. I would type enter and suddenly here, what I would have here is my module. So here on top of it, 
I could call app.module.css. The thing is that here it's not going to change anything because I'm still importing my module.css. What I would need to do is just to inject this module here in my code. In order to do so, I can now use this module.css here as an object, let's call it from style. Okay, so styles with an S, there we go. And it doesn't change anything again, because I'm still having this. What I would need to do is not also not to target here the tags directly because it's a specific header. So probably what I would do is to add another level of specificity, which would be a custom class. So here I got my dot header here. So here I'm going to come back and I can add as a class name here under brackets. I could add my styles dot header. And if I save, suddenly we can see that my header here um, is any irritated directly from um, my dot header class, which comes from the module dot CSS. That was probably the most complicated explanation because here we can see that I applied my style as a module exactly like I would do in a JavaScript object. So I'm just calling the key header. Probably what I would do, what would be more uh, smarter, let's say, I would not use this module.css. I can rename it just app.css. There we go. And instead, what I would do is to have here, and I'm just going to uh, say that I would have a dot app here, dot header, and on top here of my um, app object, I would have a class, and let's call it app, and I would save that, and instead I would import up here directly my app.css. So I'm going just to update that. And we can see here that I'm not targeting the right one, but I would use that simple CSS to go faster. So I'm calling here app, and then I'm targeting my header, and I got my background color, and there we go, I can target my element. The last way, the last possibility to, st to give some style to your element is directly to use the class name, what we just did. Later, if you would add some kind of bootstrap or Tailwind CSS to your code, you would be able to dynamically use the classes of Tailwind and Bootstrap to give some style to your application. 